Hello and welcome to this week's Glass Tire Top 5. It is the week of August 8th, 2018. I'm Christina Reese. Hi, I'm Neil Farsa. I'm a guest editor for Glass Tire. Happy to be here. So Neil is in San Antonio and um, he's been writing for us for a few years now. One of my favorite things you've ever written for us was something called The Twisted Manifesto. And today we're going to count down who we think are the most twisted artists in Texas. And by that, we mean something very, very good. So do you want to explain that? Yes. Uh, so I wrote that article at the beginning of 2017, right before Trump uh, was inaugurated as president. And it was kind of thinking about a style of art that I really like, which would range from things like the movies of Gaspar Noe to the music of Coil. And I was thinking about what kind of distinguishes that. So I came up with five rules for making twisted art, which are um, eschewing vanity, embracing humor, uh, presenting your vision unvarnished, not embellishing things because the world is twisted enough, and not sentimentalizing or the past or indulging in nostalgia. So all the artists on this list I would say 100% fulfill the criteria. They get five out of five mm -hmm. on Neil's twisted metric. Texas is easily, in my opinion, top three most twisted state in the union. The other two probably being Florida and Louisiana in the sense that if you ever read an article where it's like uh, PCP found an alligator that kills uh, evangelical pastors suspected of human trafficking, it's almost certainly from one of the, those three states. So, you know, if it makes sense that we would have a wealth of twisted artists, and we certainly do. In fact, we have more than five on this list. We have seven, so. Yeah, and seven, I mean, we really could have gone on and on. And the, the criteria continuing on from there would also be, these are artists who are really active right now. Um, there are more than seven. There are many more. I would love for people to chime in in the comment section about other people they think of as twisted. These are some of my very favorite artists in Texas, by the way. So, you know, there's a little bit of a kind of Weimar Republic thing going on here. A little bit of a degenerate, like, glass gasp. Like, let's just get the truth out there. Um, we're living in some fucked up times, and I think that they've nailed it. I think of an album that I like a lot. It's a basically industrial power noise called Sheer Hellish Miasma. And a lot of these artists, I think, uh, embody that. And that is definitely a needed thing in art to present the sheer hellish miasma that we are living in. So Yeah, this is not the most commercial art in Texas, by the way. <laughs> so it's not going to be to everybody's taste, but it is certainly to my taste, and I think it's to your taste. So anyway, yeah. let's jump in. These aren't really necessarily in any real particular order, but there are seven artists. The first artist on our list is an artist named Clay Stennett who's based in Dallas. Um, he's got a real Texas Chainsaw Massacre, white trash, hillbilly. He knows what he's doing. I mean, it's, there's something tongue-in-cheek and there's something very honest about it, too. There's There can be something quite gruesome about it, quite peyote trippy about it. Yeah, I think that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is definitely a good uh, parallel to draw. And that's a movie that is very funny, in, in my opinion, in parts. But then it's also the purest distillation of a nightmare and of a particular kind of nightmare where your neighbors are psychopaths and they're going to kill you, as in this work certainly uh, embodies that, and that's an element of living in Texas that is... Uh, he's, he does seem like the next-door neighbor, and you're not, you're, not a, you're not sure if he's going to kill you or bring a six-pack of beer over, maybe both. <laughs> I'll say this. There was a show in 2014 called Draftsman of the Apocalypse that was, done, that was curated by... Uh, the wonderful Hyde Fontenot at Central Track in Dallas when he was director of that space. Mm -hmm. Three of these artists who were on this list were in that show. Hyde located these artists early and and presented them. It's one of my favorite shows I've seen in Texas in the last five years. I wrote about it back when it happened. Clay was in that show, and that's the first that I really, really looked at his work. All right, next on our list uh, was another artist who happened to be in that show who now lives down in Galveston. It's Joaquin West. This is his sort of nom de guerre, uh, but he's he does these incredible hellscapes that reference history as well as current pop culture. The, talk about Bosch or Otto Dix. I mean, this is these are big uh, balls to the wall sort of warscapes. I've never seen a pleasant Joaquin West uh, composition, and I've seen a lot of his work. Um, there's a kind of Chapman Brothers esque thing going on as well. 
Uncon- completely uncompromised, by the way. Yeah, they're very intense. They're very epic and affecting. I mean, they definitely almost have a kind of tapestry-like quality to them. You know, there's a narrative uh, arc and flow to kind of the, the chaos and the misery in them. And they're, they're very overwhelming, you know. There's a certain segment of the population, a kind of neoliberal centrist that says things are getting better, actually. Don't listen to the news, like Steven Pinker, for example. Mm. Things have never been better before. You know, this is, we are living in the best of all possible times. It's this Panglossian uh, ideal. And I don't think anyone really feels that. Uh, yeah, great. Albert Alvarez is a San Antonio, born and raised San Antonio artist from the South Side, whose works are uh, also kind of like Joaquin West, uh, very beautiful or at least beautifully wrought and, and detailed, inspired by uh, self-taught artists like Jill Coleman or Duker in terms of Northern Renaissance paintings. And they, they really map his upbringing, an upbringing that was you know, marked by violence and crime and addiction. And there's a very impressive piece called uh, um, Codename Doomsday that's a really large piece that kind of ties together both the sort of pop culture ephemera that we're completely saturated in, and then also this is sort of grisly, horrific violence, you know, ranging from um, ISIS terrorists to Klansmen, et cetera, like that, all kind of mixed up into this almost shrine. Another great piece is one called Hell in the Pacific, which is uh, based on his grandfather who served in the Pacific theater of World War II, but was extremely shell-shocked by that and uh, never talked about it and was haunted for the rest of his life. And so it kind of mines the thousand yard stare, uh, very emotionally moving and really kind of gets to the core of how horrible World War II was. And in particular, the Pacific Theater, which was my grandfather also served in the Pacific Theater as did my great uncle, and they never talked about it ever. All right. Uh, number four on our list is Thor Johnson. Uh, people who read Glass Tire or follow Glass Tire probably know a little bit about him already. He's a Dallas based artist. Um, I sent you a link to a video that he made about not quite 10 years ago called Machine Gun Nose. Um, I'm a big fan of Thor Johnson. This guy, here's what I love about Thor. Thor has a sense of humor, but he is very preoccupied with dark and violent things. The way I met Thor was through a Facebook group. When I joined Facebook, which was really late in 2011, Somehow I found my way into a Facebook group of somebody who was running this group by running all of the most grisly headlines in the world on that given day. And I was mm-hmm. like, who is this person who's bathing in this every single day? And got to know him through that. But his work is great. I love Thor's work. And he does everything from crazy Photoshop scenarios that are incredibly violent um, to sculpture, to video. He does performance art. His stuff is relentlessly dark. It's very funny. There's a lot of satire, a lot of biting humor in it, but it's um, uh, it's it's very, very nightmarish stuff. Yeah, I mean, Machine Gun knows is extremely prescient given that it was made 10 years ago. It kind of plays as if the evil computer in the Harlan Ellison story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, made a video game to teach, to essentially, you know, indoctrinate toddlers into the violent and deranged world that they were entering. I highly recommend watching Machine Gun Nose. I mean, don't watch it at work because your, uh, it, your co-workers will think that you're, something's really wrong with you. But. Yeah. All right. Uh, number three on our list is Megan Solis, a San Antonio-based artist. Now, she's heading up to RISD pretty much as we speak, so she's going to be gone for a while. I don't know if she's going to come back to Texas. She's a performance artist and a video artist. She also does prints and sculptures. I'm mostly talking about her performances and her videos. I get very uncomfortable watching her videos. I think she's incredibly brave the way that she's willing to hold the least comfortable moment for as long as possible. Um, and they are, to me, quite nightmarish. There's a real kind, there's a Ryan treecarton thing about them. There's a Lee Bowery thing about them. There's a performative kind of gender um, kind of bile in them. She's masked. You know, her work's definitely... Uh really reflect on the kind of horror of being gendered and especially being gendered female and what that means and the mask that you have to wear and the pantomime that you have to keep up and how exhausting that is and how how tedious and nightmarish it is. And also in terms of holding the frame on the most uncomfortable moment, that's like a really sort of excellent twisted move in my opinion. Um, Alfred Lee is a Houston uh, based artist and, um, 
his works, uh, African American artists and his works are deal with basically the culture of black American culture and also the terror that's been inflicted on black Americans. So it ranges from everything from fairly kind of whimsical and creative things involving, you know, black icons like basketball players or musicians and things like that to, you know, people like uh, James Bird, who was dragged behind the car of a pickup until he died in Texas and just general other uh, cruelty, uh, torture and murder that's been inflicted on black Americans since the beginning of this nation or even before that and continues to this day. And so the works kind of seamlessly go between those two, sometimes in even the same piece. So going from, you know, sports heroes and hip hop to executions and lynchings and uh, just the, the violence can be really breathtaking in his, in his work. So number one on our list, if we can say there's a number one, is the performer Christine Vail, uh, this, which is an alter ego of a Louisiana artist who moved to Austin after Katrina. What, one of the reasons Christine is on this list is because Christine is not otherwise categorizable. Sometimes art, the way art becomes defined is the fact that you found something that doesn't really fit into any other category. Christine is a drag uh, artist, a musician, a, a performance artist. The stuff absolutely decimates any politeness, civility that you could possibly imagine. And, and Christine as a character debuted in 2011. These videos are incredible. I find them very, very funny. Yeah, it's, they're, they're amazing. Uh, the video for the song Action Toilet, which you can watch online, and it's kind of a straight banger too. I mean, it's a cool song. And the vibe of it and the video of it is sort of as if the band The Knife was remade by Divine from John Waters <laughs> movies or something. It's just this really outrageous, uh, gender bending, uh, raunchy, hilarious, um, insouciant vibe that's really impressive. There's a good cheap sleaziness though to Christine that I think is really key to the twisted aesthetic. It's mm -hmm. almost the Chainsaw Massacre thing again where yeah. things are there's not so much money to make. I mean, I know I realize that the more recent videos are a little bit more polished. I, I love this. I love that this particular artist is just shooting holes through every single bit of hypocrisy that this state or this nation has been putting forward for the last however many years. I'm so, so glad that Christine is based in Texas. I hope Christine stays in Texas. Yeah, I mean, Christine and like all the artists on this list, one of the great things is, yeah, poking holes and the hypocrisy and just the kind of unrelenting bullshit that's put forward about you know, what this country is, where where we live, what our values are, what we care about, and it just is ceaseless in terms of almost everything that you consume, be it even quote-unquote high-end media, always is putting forward this myth. So there's a great value in having confrontational and shocking and sleazy things because it helps you wake up in a certain way, and so you don't live in this boring illusion, this boring Mitt Romney you know, Forrest Gump-like illusion, which is, number one, not true, and number two, it sucks, so why do it, you know? And it doesn't make you a better person, number three. So there's really no reason to buy into it, and so I value these artists a lot for, for helping with that, you know? Yeah. For helping with that mission, I think, which is important to all Americans, which is to wake up and realize where you live, you know? We know that there are other artists in Texas doing excellent quite twisted work um and we appreciate all of them indeed indeed keep it twisted